Donnie Darko is one of my favorite movie ever. I first watched it during 2020's lockdown, although I didn't know about Frank's character for quite a while now. Every now and then I would come across a picture of Frank on numerous forums or Facebook groups and it would always catch my eye. I remember being quite intrigued by the bunny when I was younger, and needless to say, after watching the movie, I truly developed an obsession for Frank. Tony Dargo was released in 2001 and is directed by Richard Kelly. It's actually his first feature, and the man was only 24 when he wrote and shot it. It's also the first movie Jake Gyllenhaal, or Gyllenhaal, however you want to pronounce it, starred in, along with his sister Maggie Gyllenhaal. This drama sci-fi teen movie is still appreciated by many film lovers more than 20 years after its release. The Rabbit was designed by Richard Kelly himself, and you can actually see the drawing he did in the film, in Frank's room towards the end of the movie. Rob Berman gave life to Frank with a magnificent sculpt. Although some could say it's a simple sculpt, I truly think the eeriness of Frank comes from his mask. After discovering the movie, I knew I wanted to add Frank to the collection. And that's when the quest for the perfect bunny mask began. Being as obsessed as I was with the movie and the character, my collection without a Frank mask would never be complete. I knew of several mask makers who made some Frank replicas, and although they looked great for the price, I still wasn't satisfied and wanted something different. Back in the day on the RPF board, I remembered an artist talking about how he acquired the original movie-used Frank mask mold, the artist being Hart Andrews. Hart Andrews now works as a consigner for prop store and has a pretty intense knowledge of film-use props. Let's say he's a very valid source. So I went back into those old RPF threads and managed to dig the one where Art said he would offer 20 masks casted from the original mold. This was back in 2013, so trying to find one back in 2020 was pretty much impossible to say the least. I knew only one collector who had one of those, but sadly, and I can understand him, he would not sell it. No matter how many times I tried to offer him any amount or other pieces to trade for it, his mask would stay with him. So I went ahead and started the detective mode. I kept digging those old RPF threads and tried to set a list of original owners of those masks. It took me many hours, many sleepless nights. I was just obsessed with it, and after a few days of research, I managed to lock at seven, maybe eight of those lucky mask collectors. I went ahead and sent them messages. Not for sale, sorry. That's pretty much the only answers I got. Only one did imply he would maybe sell it. How much? 5k. I don't blame him. This copy sold for more than 5k on eBay since then. Those masks are hell rare, and you can't get anything closer to the actual screen used mask. Well, the price was too much for me, sadly, and the dream of owning one of those would slowly vanish away. A couple days later, one of the owners from who I did not hear back answered Chris. Hi, I still have my Frank. I hadn't thought about selling it, but happy to take an offer and see if you can bend my arm. Cheers, Chris. There, there might be my chance. I had sold a few pieces in order to fund this one, if luckily enough I could find one. So I went ahead and offered Chris a certain amount. He answered saying it was working and would get back to me later that day. He also mentioned he would need to check what he paid for it. Those hours of waiting were hell. I woke up to an email from the RPF. You got a new private message. I rushed to the website and opened Chris' message with my finger crossed. I have thought of her and your offer is very fair, so I would be willing to sell it. No way. He accepted my offer. No way. I could hardly believe it. 
Frank was almost there. Almost. As most of you know, the world was under a lockdown, and Chris mentioned how he would not accept my payment before the situation was resolved, which could be understandable. This was end of March, and Chris shipped the mess by the end of May. Two long months to wait. On June the 1st, a package from England arrived to my doorstep. I did actually shut an unboxing back in the day, but I never got around to it did. I wanted to make the best visual shots I ever did, and even contacted the movie theater in order to recreate the famous scene. Sadly, after a few days of negotiating, the owner of the place ended up not allowing our shoot, and that project remained uncompleted. But let's get back on track. The mask arrived. was home. If you guys follow the channel, you must know by now that I'm an avid bus collector, so I went ahead and bought a small one for it. It had to fit in the cabinet and be classy enough to fit with the whole display stand. Gotta say I'm very happy with the result. You can't imagine how happy I was. And this particular mask is still to this day one of, if not my favorite piece in my entire collection. I truly feel privileged to witness such an amazing piece of art every day. The mask is so special that it's actually not in my collection, as odd as it sounds, but my girlfriend loved the movie so much that we both agreed that Frank would be displayed in a living room. That's where it proudly sits, in a UV protected display cabinet, where it will stay for quite a while. About the piece in itself, the mask was made the same way the original screen user mask was. It's made from soft urethane foam and features a very accurate hood, which was designed based on the pattern of the screen user one. The mask also came with a display stand which was signed by James Duval, the actor who played Frank, and Rob Berman, the original sculptor. You can even see James' likeness inside the mask. Hart Andrews did the painting, and as most would think it's a pretty simple one, I think he managed to replicate the original prop paint like no one else. To top it all, our Andrews included a certificate of authenticity, which Chris was nice enough to find and send. Well, the quest was over, but successful. It had little to no chances of ever being a success, and to this day, I still can't believe that I'm part of the club. I have one of those 20 here. I hope you guys liked the video, it's kind of a new concept I wanted to make on the channel, you know, for those special pieces that I did not make some unboxings of, and, you know, I'm thinking of making those special, more in-depth video, maybe more often, or uh, maybe for pieces that I did not share on the channel and that you guys may be interested in, you know, discovering more. So, uh, if you guys did like it, make sure to let me know in the comments which one you'd like to see. Uh, maybe if you've seen some pieces, you know, in the background on my videos and maybe if you have a request or, uh, you know, just let me know in the comments. And don't worry, I do have a couple unboxings planned for the end of the year still. So uh, this new concept is not a replacement for the unboxing videos. Well, that's pretty much it. The story of how I gotta find one of the rarest pieces of my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Loris from Collectibles UL, signing off.